This is Math 142, and we're going to talk about Section uh, 5.1, which is about angles. And so um, you've probably seen degrees, and you may have seen radians before as well. We're going to talk about both ways of measuring angles. So one thing, one way to think about uh, an angle is that it's a rotation, right? Like if you can picture you're, you're here and you're facing that way, and you turn a certain amount, and now you're facing this way, um, that amount of turning, we could we call that the, the angle, right? That's that's what it is. And uh, in this shape, what we have is we have just this uh, initial the part that I just erased. We have this uh, initial direction, and then where we ended up facing, we call that the terminal. Sometimes it's called the terminal side, um, and that's the direction. So. You can think of an angle two ways. You can think of it as a thing, like a space. You can also think of it actively as a rotation. And typically, um, we talk about degrees when we have angles. And you've seen you've seen degrees before, as you know, uh, all the way around is 360 degrees. And then any partial of that or anything past that is, you know, some piece of it. Uh, we know straight up would be 90 degrees. Out here is 180. Right, and think of this as a, a fourth of the way, half of the way to a full circle, three fourths of the way to the full circle, uh, full circle, etc. So we can think about like thirty degrees would probably be about right a third of the way to ninety. And starting to think of these as fractions, particularly of one hundred and eighty, will help us a lot when we start talking about um, radians, a different way of measuring these degrees. And degrees can be um, other directions too. Like we could go this direction and say that's negative 60 degrees. So this counterclockwise is positive and clockwise is, is negative um, as far as angles are concerned. And, you know, we could go around twice, right? Like we could go 360. Ah, that was uh, 720 degrees, two 360s. So there's degrees. I'm sure you've seen them uh, before a lot, that sort of thing. Um, another thing I want to point out is when we use variables for degrees, for angles, we usually use letters from the Greek alphabet. Uh, things like theta, phi, alpha, beta, and gamma, lowercase. So those will be, and those are just letters from the Greek alphabet. And we typically use those just so we can, you know, say, oh, these are angles. We don't always use them. Sometimes we use X, but just so you know, there's something that we'll have. Okay, so let's talk about uh, radians. So radians are another way to express an angle. So in degrees, we have a full circle, full rotation is 360 degrees. Now, radians are, are interested, interesting. Like, if you think about that word, uh, it it's, you know, shares a root with a radius, so the radius of a circle. So I have a circle, which is R. And look at that great circle that I just made. Uh, I won't make them better. I'll just keep trying. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I thought it was there. That's good enough. Uh, so we have a radius for a circle. Okay, and stick with me. I'm going to get with what a radian is here. Um, the circumference of a circle, the circumference is the distance around the circle. So the circumference is 2 pi times the radius, right? No matter how big the radius is. So um, what radians are, is there how many radii you've gone around the circle? So for example, if I just go like from here to here, if I just go a quarter, quarter circle, like there's some radius here. What you're doing is you're measuring how many of this length this is. And I know that this is straight and this is curved, but that's what radians are. And what's interesting, if you think about a full rotation here, um, a full rotation is 2 pi times r times the radius. So that full rotation, if I go all the way around, would be that distance divided by the length of the radius, which is 2 pi. So that's interesting. 360 degrees, good degree here, is 2 pi radian because you've gone 
2 pi of these radius across it, right? That's about, that's about 6. So about 6 radians is a full rotation. You can tell that's a really big measure. Like, in, what I mean by that is like 6, it goes a long ways in 6 units, whereas this goes 360. If I think about degrees, 360 degrees is like the same amount of rotation. So what we're measuring here, this 2 pi, is we say you've gone an angle of 2 pi, that many radians. And so if we, if we stick with that, 360 is, uh, is 2 pi. Well, what would 180 then be? Well, since it's only halfway, it's half of 2 pi, which is pi. And this relationship right here is huge. This will help you go back and forth uh, between radians and degrees. It will also help you just really like ground what radians. So let's think about 90 degrees. So well, 90 degrees, that's halfway to 180. So it must be half a pi, right? Half of 180 is 90. So half a pi, we'll just say is pi over 2. And uh, do, do, do. let's do a couple more. Uh, this 270. Well, this is half a pi, another half a pi, which is a full pi, and another half a pi. So it's three halves of pi, or three pi over two. So that's what radians uh, are. Oh, let's, let me do one more here, 45 degrees. Well, one, two, three, four, right? That's 180, it's a fourth of the way to 180. So it's a, if it's a fourth of the one to 180, it's pi over four. Notice the way that I got there. I thought of like 45 is what fraction of 180? In other words, I went 45 divided by 180 and it's in terms of pi times pi. So what's the fraction of 180, which is pi? 180 and pi are the same thing, um, the same measure, I mean. So just thinking uh, fraction-wise real quick, if I go 45 divided by 180 on my calculator, uh, it does give me 0.25. I might know that that's one fourth. If I don't know that that's one fourth, if I don't know what fraction this is, just a, a nice um, thing that these calculators have. If I go into the math menu right here, and then I choose this, give me the answer as a fraction, and I hit enter again, it gives me the one fourth. So notice what I'm saying, pi and 180 are the same thing. Uh, and what I mean by the same thing is 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. They're the same rotation from here to here. So if I'm going from degrees to radians, I can take the degrees and multiply it by pi over 180. In other words, I'm, I'm taking out the 180, I'm saying what the fraction is, and I'm saying it's in terms of pi. Taking out the 180 and put it in the pi. And notice if I go the other way, if I want to go this way then, well, multiply it by the um, reciprocal of that, right? Multiply by both sides of this by 180 over pi. So degrees, if I'm in radians, is 180 over pi. Get rid of the pi and bring in the 180, right? Like, because that, the number that's in there is a fourth, a fourth of 180, and then you're eliminating the pi. So that's that's kind of helpful. So for example, if I said uh, pi over five radians, and I want to know what that is in, in terms of degrees, well, it's a fifth of pi, right? It's a, it's a fifth of the way to here. So whatever that is, well, it, like if I don't think about the formula, I can just say, oh, that's just a fifth of 180, one other, whatever one fifth times 180 is. If I want to technically use the formula, I'd take those and I'd say uh, pi over five times 180 over pi. Notice how the pi divides out and I've got 180 divided by five. And if I don't trust myself to do that in my head, I'm going to go 180 divided by five on my calculator, get 36. So that would be 36 degrees. And going the other way, if you tell me some degrees, let's say I have 210 degrees, and I want to know what that is in terms of radians, well, it's um, what is the fraction, right? What fraction of 180 is 210? 
and that's multiplied by pi. And again, I might, if I don't trust myself or I just am cautious, I'm going to go 210 divided by 180. It's going to be some decimal. I might know what that decimal is as a fraction. If I don't, I'm just going to go into the math menu, say, give me the answer of the fraction, 7 sixths. So this would be 7 pi over 6, or 7 sixths of pi, right? So 7 sixths of the way to 180. So just pass it by a sixth. All right, so we can go back and forth between degrees and radians. So thinking about that, um, let's see, we said 90 degrees, that's half the way to 180, so that's pi over two radians. And just pi over two, again, just to get a sense of this, this is a number, right? We leave it in terms of pi so that we can have an exact value. But um, as a number, pi over two, that's like three divided by two, about 1.56. So 1.56 about radians is 90 degrees, right? That's that's not very fine of a of a thing to measure with, right? That's why we we write them as these fractions like this. Also because these are exact. So I'm curious. Think about one radii. What should it be about in degrees? In other words, remember the radius is if we have a radius, how many of these go around the circle? And typically it's like all the way around the circle is two pi. And we only want um, just one of these radii. And two pi is about six, right? So it should be about a sixth of the way around the circle. So if we, if we want to be um, exact about it, which 180 divided by pi times one. And 180 divided by pi, that's like 180 divided by three about, right? which should be about 60 degrees, but if we want to know what it is exactly, so 180 divided by pi, 57.3 degrees. So one, one um, radian is 57 degrees. It's just a nice little kind of number sense to, uh, thing to have in your, in your mind. And that's about, right? Because we divide it by pi, which is irrational. and This decimal won't terminate, but this is good enough measure-wise. All right, uh, so one other thing that I want to talk about is coterminal angles. Uh, co, same, terminal, ending spot. So, for example, 30 degrees, it's not equal to, but it's coterminal with, well, I could add 360 to that, 390 degrees, right? Like, so... I could say 30 degrees, or I could do a full circle and then uh, that 30 degrees more, there's my plus 360, and it terminates in the same spot. It's not the same rotation, right? It's a bigger, it's more rotating, but it is coterminal. It terminates in the same spot. So for coterminal angles, if I'm in degrees, I can add or subtract as many 360s as I want. And notice that's a 360n, where n uh, is an integer. Um, n is a is a just like a counting number, one, two, three, four, five, or negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Um, similarly, if I'm in radians, I'm going to add or subtract uh, two pi as many times as I want. So if I have pi over seven, and I want an angle that's coterminal to that, I'm going to add two pi to it. And uh, <laughs> Radians are going to make you really do a lot of fraction work, which is a good thing. Uh, this is in terms of sevenths, pi over seven. Um, so this would be, if I wanted this in terms of seven as well, you know, multiply by seven over seven, this would be 14 sevenths. So pi over seven is coterminal with uh, 14 pi over seven, right? Or you can subtract two pi from it. So it's also coterminal with negative 13 pi over seven. Or you could do like uh, two times around, right? So you could add that 14 pi over seven twice. So 28, 29 pi over seven. 
So coterminal angles, you get them by adding, subtracting two pi's or adding, subtracting uh, 360's, just depending on uh, if you're in degrees or. So all of this uh, gives us one other thing that we could we could deal with as well. And that's the arc, arc length. That's how long an arc is if we know the, the length of the radius. So again, remember that uh, the circumference is 2 pi times, times the radius. So what we can do, if we have some circle. Ah. So let's say that we have a radius of 10. So the circumference of this would be uh, 2 pi times the radius times 10, which is 20 pi. So notice now we're not talking about the angle. We're talking about how long this distance is all the way around the circle, the actual circumference of the circle, right? If you were to travel this path, and let's say this was in miles, 10 miles, you were to travel this path, you would, you would travel 20 pi miles, about 60 miles. So, um, that's, so that's the circumference. The arc length, let's take this same circle again, but let's only go that far, 90 degrees. So from here, we're going to end up with a, a nice formula for us for arc length. So I know that if I went all the way around, it would be 2 pi times, times 10, or maybe I'll write this as 10 times 2 pi. So that's, that's if I went... Uh, like I said, full circle all the way around. That's the circumference all the way around. But I've only gone 90 degrees. So I'm going to think of 90 as a fraction of 360. So I've really gone that times that, right? 90 divided by 360, a fourth of the way around the circle. So it's basically a fourth of the circle. And so, you know, from there, I could just hash out what it is. But I want to actually use this to think about this. I've still got that, that radius 10. Let me think about this 2 pi times 90 over 360. If I multiply this, this is like 90 times 2 pi over 360. Stick with me. Watch what I'm doing. Uh, 2 and the 360, that reduces down to 90 pi over 180. And notice this is just 90 degrees in radians, right? This is like 10 times pi over 2. Which should be uh, which should be five pi. Isn't that crazy? So basically, what happened was uh, to get my arc length, and no matter what this angle is, ninety or forty-five or whatever it is, this will always happen. You always get this in radians. So if your theta is in radians, arc length, which we usually use an s to denote is the radius times the theta. And again, this is why you've got 2 pi times the angle divided by 360, what fraction you've gone around the circle. And then the 2, that takes, takes that down to 180, and then this is just your, uh, your angle in radians. So for example, if I said uh, this is 50 miles, and you're doing, trying to find this arc length, and this was pi over 3, that arc length is just that radius of 50 g pi over 3. And if that angle, uh, let's say it's in degrees, <laughs> look at that terrible picture. No, don't look at it. I take it back. Um, you do 130 degree rotation with this is, let's just make it 7. Oop, and we want to know that arc length. Uh, change that into radians, right? We know that it's 130 pi over 180. You can reduce it if you want, right? 13 pi over 18 and multiply by the radius. And then whatever that ends up being, there's your arc length. And you can leave these in terms of pi. Um, it's actually, I think for the most part, best if we do that. All right. So there is our first section. Uh, get really familiar with radians because they are going to be uh, the currency that we uh, that we use mostly. Give the questions in the section a try. Send me any questions that you have. You can message me or you can post them in the forums.